Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. Cause I've been everywhere, man I've been everywhere, man Across the deserts, bear, man I've breathed the mountain air, man I've traveled, I've had my chair, man I've been everywhere Been to Talamore, Seymour, Lismore, Maloolaba, Nambo, Mrooch, Dorko, Mor, Maloolaba, Birdsville, Emmerville, Wallaville, Connabano, Connabon, Strath, Ryan, Prost, Pine, Nala, Dala, Darwin, Ginger, Nilla, Quinn, Mark, Killer, Wallen, Miller, Burger, Villa, Cumberland, I'm a killer I've been everywhere, man I've been everywhere, man we often joke that uh, Lucky Star has never been to a place where we are going on regional roundup, and today is no exception. Rob, you might tell us where we find Dion today. Oh, you're going to make me say it's Milbrolong, which is somewhere near Wagga. Wagga Wagga, sorry. Dion Howard, good morning to you. Morning, Jess. How are you doing Good. You just disappeared momentarily there for a moment. Um, great to have you on board. Um, well, we better start with the obvious. Uh, let's be a little bit more specific than somewhere near Wagga. Um, Milbrolong, where is it? Um, so Milbrolong is halfway between Lockhart and Henty in the southern Riverina of New South Wales. And Henty is famous for having a field day, one of the Australia's biggest and best. Do you go to that as a vet? Yes, I did actually. I got to go for work. I went to Henty four out of five days of the week, so I really sunk my teeth into the Henty Field Days being back on this year. Um, we just wrapped that one up last week, actually, and there were some record crowds there. It's good. Uh, it's good. The Australian agricultural industry is alive and well, and has actually survived pretty darn well through um, through the COVID period because it's an industry that just has to keep going, I suppose. So, as a vet, uh, how much of an impost onto your life has COVID been, uh, in, considering that the agricultural industries that had to steam on? Yeah, so that's what we did have to do. We had to steam on. We had to uh, adapt to different ways of getting to assess and treat animals. So in my line of work as a district veterinarian, um, working with farmers in my local area, where I do a lot of diagnosis of diseases, some of those um, adaptations include FaceTiming the farmer and they put turn the camera around and put that on the affected animal and we got to have a bit of a chat online when I couldn't get onto the farm and also doing contactless uh, disease investigations. So getting told where the animals were and having to work out how to wrangle them myself in lots of cases. Because one of the things that has become a thing over the last two years as people started to you know, meet via Zoom and FaceTime and all these other things have been screenshots of, oh, here we are all on a Zoom call. You'd have some beauties. Uh, here I am with a cow somewhere outside Wagga or here I am with a cow somewhere between Henty and uh, Narendra. Yeah, there was um, lots, of, yeah, lots of screenshots, lots of videos being sent. And, but ultimately we did have to press on and we were able to obviously still produce the food and fibre that Australia and our, um, the countries that we export to need and that has been um, one of the great things to be able to be involved in an industry that's been able to continue on and innovate even after the last couple of very challenging years. Now, we always ask our guests on Regional Roundup to tell us a little bit about the zone, the region, the area. What do people do in... Obviously, there's been an agricultural theme there. What things did people do in and around Milburn? Apart from practice saying the name. So, yes, well, it, yeah, that, that's all I kick off from the get-go. But um, at the moment, if you're coming down to Milbelong, um, the canola has been flowering, so we've got lots of yellow as you drive around the countryside. So ultimately, most of the area is involved with cropping or livestock production. Um, we've also had a very big week locally. We've just had, we had the Lockhart Show last weekend. And yesterday was the Lockhart Picnic Races, so that um, little town um, being not too far from where I am today. The horses, unfortunately, at the Lockhart Picnic Races yesterday weren't able to run because the track was too wet, but they did have a sausage dog race in, um, in substitution. Oh, that's all right then, because I was getting concerned that there'd be nothing to do. Aren't we, aren't we very good in Australia at... Um creating nonsensical events but it, uh, it it just captures the mind of all the locals does it and that is one of the classics yeah so uh, 
Um, yeah, the Picky Graces have been on. Next week, we, we also have the Spirit of the Land Festival. And it's also a beautiful time of year to um, wander up the Rock Hill, also known as the Kengal Aboriginal Place, and look out over the countryside at the absolutely beautiful vistas. Now, the other thing I know, Dion, you're quite heavily involved in is regional agricultural shows and the importance of those to regional towns. Talk a bit about that for us. Yeah, so I'm actually super fortunate this weekend, being um, the long weekend in October for us up here, um, is to be attending the Berrigan show tomorrow and then the Wolbundry show on Monday. So it's wonderful to have shows back on for the springtime this year and the amazing bringing together of community that our agricultural shows have. So whether you've got uh, entries in the pavilion or people that are showing their horses or their dogs or other livestock that they might have on show or poultry. And it just brings together the community and so many different crafts, skills, talents. And it, and it is a bit about having that pride in what you are producing and what you're able to come together and share with the community and celebrate what the community does really well. Notwithstanding the fact you're on the other side of the Murray to what we are, I'm assuming there'd be a Victorian equivalent. Is there a website that people can go to to find out when these regional shows are on? Because you generally find out about it the day after. Yeah, so it's the Agricultural Shows Australia website. It's a great central area to go to each of, each of your state's uh, local shows. So, for example, um, in New South Wales, it's Ag Shows New South Wales. So the Victorian equivalent of that. And then on those websites, I have a big list of all the country shows that are going to be happening so that you can work out what's on in your area. And also you might be fortunate enough to, if you want to send away to get a nice little pocket guide, um, like I have a couple of those that I carry around that say when, when the shows are on and whereabouts they're going to be held and so that you can make sure that if you are passing through a town, you can check hey, what time of the year might their show be on and could I swing by and make myself a part of it? Because they are truly one of the great events of regional Australia and um, as I think you're an ambassador for them, aren't you? Yeah, so I'm actually the National Rural Ambassador for 2022. So that involves going to open a lot of shows, including the couple that I'm heading to this weekend. Excellent. Well, Dion, thanks for uh, for being part of the regional roundup for us today. Um, always good to have a chat to you, and I know it's been a while trying to get hold of you because you're such a busy person, but thank you for being part of it today.